All right. Welcome to Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous. My name is Tom. Hi, Tom. I'm a fantasy sports addict. And my name is Ryan. Howdy, Ryan. And I'm a fantasy sports auction addict. Yep. Today we're here talking about fantasy basketball auction drafts. More in depth. More in depth. Per uh, request. Yeah, we don't know if you saw our auction draft strategy video. Uh, it was just kind of basic overview of auction drafts. Uh, because of time constraints with the videos, we didn't get too in depth with it. Just kind of uh, skim the surface of auction draft strategies. Right. So now we've gone way overboard. We're very in depth. We're doing a whole podcast. We formulated the FSAA auction draft, draft strategy. Yeah. This was a, a question from a user. A user. I, I keep calling him a user. I don't know why. It's software. Uh, so it goes back someone to someone that watches their YouTube channel and they made a comment. Yes. So I guess he is a <clears throat> YouTube user. So a viewer. I'll just go ahead and read his entire comment for you. Uh, basically, it's from Mike Facult. Okay. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching and commenting and taking part. All right. So Mike, Mike says, "Hey guys." Love your vids so far. Keep being yourself. You guys are hilarious and definitely know your stuff when it comes to fantasy hoops. All right, thank you. We That's appreciate generous the praise. kind words. Yeah. And then it goes on. I was wondering if you guys can make a video that goes more in depth when it comes to auction drafts since they are tougher to prepare for. For example, well, I'll just continue with the rest of the question and we'll kind of break down and keep answering. Very long, okay. Yeah, it's very long. Uh, so, for example, how much of your budget would you look to use on players ranked in the top 50 range? Whether you'd look to try and get a couple top tier players and have that big drop off after that versus having a more balanced team. Well, then he goes on, what players would you be looking to target? What are the or significant drop offs when it comes to players at a specific position? And anything else you think might help. And then he goes on, I love the auction draft video strategy you guys already covered, but I think this would help me even more for my draft. Okay. All the best. Keep up the good work. Wow, that was a long... Long-winded, long question, lots of points. So We're he, not going to do three questions then today, are we? No, normally for our podcast, we like to do a quick little Q&A, and we answer three different questions from our fans, our viewers... Yep. But since this is such a long and in-depth question, okay. we figure we're just going to break it down, do one, and actually spend our entire podcast talking about this long question. You know, this is just because we love auction drafts. Like, what about auction drafts do you really love, Tom? You get to do anything you want. First of all, I mean, you don't have your draft strategy dictated to you. Normally, in a normal snake draft, right, your position is sort of indicating what type of team you're going to draft and select. It's dictated to you, but in an auction league, you get to pick what you want, right? There's just so much more strategy involved with that. Absolutely. You, you control your own destiny. Everybody starts off with the same amount of money and yep. have the same chance to get the same players. So there's none of that. I got my queue lined up, but I'm picking at the ends, and the next thing you know, four of the five players I wanted are all gone. You and missed your guy. Yeah. For me, that's what I love most about auction drafts is just okay. the ability to be able to get the guys that you want and being able to build the type of team that you want to play. Okay, so whether it's a punting strategy, whether it's a roto, more well-rounded, you just love that you can pick your own team. And like literally, players you want, you could, you could be a homer if you had to. Well, it's, it's a lot better checking in on your team when it's loaded with your dudes. Just like, yeah, I get it. Absolutely. If it's all your guys, you know, you might not be able to get them in any other normal draft. Uh, and you still aren't going to be able to get all your guys no. in an auction draft. It just doesn't work that way. But every player you get on your team can be a player you like. 
So we do it. So that's that's why we love fantasy auction leagues. Uh, we love them so much that our fantasy sports addicts uh, basketball league that we're doing. It's now switching to an auction draft. Just because we love it so much. And uh, we think you should all love it just as much. I mean, we love it so much that when Mike asked us this question, we, we thought, did some research. We thought we'd just jump in, do an auction draft, kind of take some notes, and have enough to go and make a video. And that make, was that uh, was Friday, by the way. We've been doing auction drafts for three days straight. It's now, you know, midnight Sunday. I gotta get to bed, but I've been doing auction drafts, and now we gotta do our podcast. I think we got one more coming up yet tonight. I don't know. I mean, we're we're out of control with the auction drafts, but I mean, we're filled our teams, but we still need the fix that we're doing mock drafts. So we'll do one more, one more. I mean, we're maxed out both accounts, two accounts apiece, but we got we got one more. It's obviously gonna be our own. So. You know, I think we've we've perfected our auction strategy, haven't we? I feel or no. I can you? Can you? You Is can a- come up with a damn good strategy and something to to kind of help you, a good guide to go by at least. Um, I feel confident in breaking down what we did and going over everything. Right, but nothing's ever set in stone with an auction. This is That's every part auction. Of the fun. Every auction is special and separate. It's like a little individual snowflake, right? All right, so let's get back to this guy's question. All we, right. uh, all right, we talked about why we love them. There's, they're unique, you control it, and there's strategy. Yep, so uh, the first part. thing he uh, brings up is he mentions that auction drafts are tougher to prep for. Now, are they? Are they? And what do we do to prep for an auction draft? Well, let's see. Uh, I notice, uh, you know, you're sipping a beer currently, and you have another beer lined up. Um, and you know, an auction draft's a couple hours. That's that's look. It, you're you've planned ahead. You're prepared here. You know, we got another auction coming up in a few a uh, few minutes after this podcast. But right. I think this is all the prep you really need to do, right? Go to the bathroom, have a cigarette. Well, not that we advocate tobacco use, but... Just if you need it, get it. Just, you know, no no distractions. Well, if it's medically allowable, I guess you could have a bong rip as well. Whatever. Whatever works for you to auction draft. That's our point. Uh, that's really about all the setup you need. Well, you control that, it. So the you thing don't... that's different about... The auction compared to the snake is the prep that you do for a snake draft is you log in, you see what slot you are, and then you kind of got an idea of what players are going to be for you. Like, okay, I got, you know, the fourth pick, so that means I'm going to have, like, the 20th pick or something like that. So you kind of got a range of players that you, you can go for. Right. But for auction, obviously, that's not the case, and it's just, deciding which players you want to target. I guess that would be the strategy. Come up with a list of guys you want. Is yeah. That, is that your... Get, get your cue. That's your pre-work. Have, have an idea of like their draft and your budget in mind. and So the players that you're kind of targeting for or going for or just you like and you want on your team. Now also, you should probably, just as a reminder, always pay attention to the league settings. If this is a rotisserie league... You probably don't want to try a punting strategy necessarily. You probably don't want to be uh, doing Ryan's punting free throw percentage strategy in the middle of a rotisserie. Right. So just yeah, pay just attention. Obviously, you know, That's same same strategy for all drafts. Go within, for that. Within the league settings, pick your players. You know, have a loose outline of guys you like and guys you're willing to... Who are you willing to spend money on? Who do you like? You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's what this is. So, again, yes, they are kind of tougher to prep for. I don't um, think so. I mean, you got a beer lined up. You're good. Again, I recommend if you've never done an auction draft, uh, you do a mock or two before you do your real draft just to kind of get a feel. Yeah, and, again, try to make sure the draft is full of people, like actual real people, not robot people, because the only true way you're ever going to get a taste for auction is if you do a couple couple of mocks, a couple of real auctions, and even then, what, like four, five, six, seven seasons in doing auction drafts, you're still like, 
man, that was different every time you come out. Okay, there's always something weird going on. And just, you got to be ready to roll with it. Okay. Anyways, uh, the next part of uh, Mike's question, this kind of gets into the meat of auction drafts. Uh, Meaty. How much of your budget do you spend on top 50 players? Yeah. That was a question. He wants to know how much I thought I was just saying budget. yes. That's not an answer. Isn't it? No. I'm advocating spending money. But how much of your budget? Yeah. Yeah? Just yeah? <laughs> that's real know. helpful. I know that's really helpful. No, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm advocating spending money. Okay, how much money? Well, we should, we should we pair these two questions? Because I think if we combine these two questions, you and I kind of came up with a auction formula. I think we did. I, we've done so many auction drafts this weekend. I think you and I have come to a consensus on how to... I don't know if to, it's a formula or so much as a budget. It's a budget, but it's also still a formula. You can, you can, it's, it's, you can riff on it. it doesn't, it's not set in stone again. But this is independently, like this was like a double blind test. We compared data of separate drafts we did and like compared our strategies. Our first draft we did, we were both 30 to $35 uh, under budget. We left money on the table. I left 30 essentially, you left 35 in various. And, but every, to be fair, this was our first auction basketball, I think of the season. And, uh, Everybody else in this draft sim- seemed to leave about $30 on the table as well. We went back and looked at all the data, so we weren't unique in this. But we didn't have a good feeling. Well, in uh, my, my defense for this particular draft, I didn't commit, which is also you a were trying useful strategy. tip. Yeah. Uh, I was wanting to do my DeAndre and Drummond pairing. And the problem with trying to do the punting free throw strategy is you're probably not the only one thinking that. Right. And in this particular case, there was obviously someone else to do it, and he outbidded me for Andre Drummond, and I had to change my strategy. But because... You had to. You didn't have to. Well, I I chose to. Right. Shame um, on you. Yes and no. I mean, I did end up leaving money on the table, but I wasn't going to be able to afford both of them. Yeah, you could have. Nah. Yes, I think you, I think, anyways, you have to commit. That's the point. You have to be willing. If you're going to do this punting strategy Ryan's described, if you're looking for DeAndre uh, Jordan and Andre Drummond, you'll pay probably a little bit over value, but commit to your strategy. Don't come up short with only one. Because by the time that they're getting nominated, all the good players are already gone. They're kind of there right at the end where the money value starts to drop off. So if you're going to do it, pay for it. So if you don't get them and you were planning on it, you're going to end up with money left over. Fair enough. Uh, we Everybody was just a little too conservative with their money in this draft. So we weren't happy. Uh, we liked our teams. You know, give us a, a draft strategy and give us a little plan, even with... Uh, Leaving money on the table, we still came away with, I think, very competitive teams in this particular league. I'm happy with it, but the point was we just didn't have a good taste in our mouth. It didn't, it, we, we didn't get enough, and we needed to really, what's, what's a good auction? How do you, what's a good, wow. I mean, we both left 30 bucks on the table. That's like, it's like a third, fourth round player, maybe, second round, late second round player. So you don't in that instance, on the table. we did not... Spend enough of our budget on those top 50 type players. No. So we should have had <laughs> at least one more. And we came up then after subsequent follow-up auction drafts with, this is the double blind portion. We compiled our data. I came up with an arbitrary formula, an arbitrary budget. Then we compared what I actually did. It matched it. And we compared what you did. It was slightly different, but your six players also matched what I came up with. So through independent analysis here, we have come up with an accidental official FSAA guideline for an auction draft. Is that safe to say? Yeah. Basically, I would. Well, let's go back. Do we need to cover the second part of this question real quick? Okay, I'll, I'll just read the both parts of the questions again. Okay. Uh, how much of your budget do you spend on top 50 players and... Is it better to have top-tier players 
our well-rounded team. All right, we're gonna describe how to com like it's a combo of all of that. Does that make sense? Yes. So we'll you, you, you want some top fifty players, and you want a well-rounded, high-ranked team, and that's gonna involve finding bargains later on. But that starts to happen pretty quickly. So, without further ado, this is our draft formula, our budget formula for an auction draft. Yep. All right. This is assuming you're in a standard 12 person, head to head or roto, doesn't matter, but a 12 person, $200 budget auction league. Okay? That's what we're basing this on. Yahoo standard. We've done many of these all weekend long. Okay. You want to spend $180 to $185 on the first six players on your team. Whoa. Whoa. That sounds like a lot, right? We just said it's a $200 budget. How many, how many players are on these rosters? 13. 13. Okay. So it's a little less than half of your roster, and you're spending $180 to $185 in theory. It's a bit spendy, yes, perhaps. Perhaps. But if you spend less than this, you're dangerously at risk of leaving money on the table, and not in like a cute fashion, okay? Because, again, we're talking about your top six players, so this is, what, 60, 72 overall ranked players or people drafted? Exactly. And this is the point where you're no longer shilling out $20, $15 for a player. Their values are starting to drop really quick. Everybody else is out of money, so they can't spend more than like a buck, two bucks. That's where you start finding your value players. Right. And you have money for that because you spent smart on big ticket items if you needed to. So the one eighty to one eighty five dollars, like kind of break it down by picks, like how much money per player, kind of a thing. Okay, I follow a specific dollar amount. Just it seems like as a pattern. But I will say this: this hundred eighty dollars, hundred eighty five dollars. It doesn't matter if you break it up the way I did, or if you spend like. $30 on six players, okay? The idea is that you have spent around $180 or just a scotch more for your first six players, okay? That way you've got a core, your roster's defined, and you're not afraid to find value players, budget players, $1, $2 players, whatever, later on. You just need your core. Okay. You need your team foundation. So my, my particular, I, I guess, budgeting strategy sort of went as follows. My first player, I tend to go for like a top 10 player if I can get him. I'm willing to spend somewhere around $60 for my first player. Okay? Uh, in my case, that happens to frequently be DeMarcus Cousins. And the next dollar amount, somewhere around $40. Yeah, that's another, that's spendy. That's $100 right there. Boom, boom. Two players. That's fine. If you, if you pair these players intelligently... Uh, like I went DeMarcus Cousins and Paul George. All right, I'm feeling good. Starting yeah. to look good. Okay. The next amount, $35. John Wall. That was my third pick in this particular favorite strategy. So that's, again, that's 135. That's three players. We're already spending quick. The next amount, I'm looking for a $20 player. In this instance, I got Jeff Teague. Okay. $20. The next two picks are $15 picks. And that could be, it could be just about anything you want that you're willing to spend about $15 on. I got Andrew Wiggins and I got Carl Anthony Towns. Again, this is a rough dollar amount, $15 I'm estimating for those two players. That's six players, $180. Okay. $185, I believe, actually. There we go. And for, for me, this uh, same draft, um, I went with a Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, one, two. Uh, I mentioned before that my favorite spot in the draft is that 12th pick wraparound. So I kind of treated it the same where I want to get, you know, two of those, you know, late first, early second. So for Clay Thompson and Jimmy Butler, that cost me $105. Okay. So again, a little bit over me, a little bit but... over Tom, but again, I think it was worth it. And then I got uh, Nikolai Vucevic nice. for 37 
So there I got my two swingmans in my center. Okay. And then I finished that off with Reggie Jackson. Paid 14 for him, but I needed a point guard. And then Giannis Antetokounmpo, also uh, $13. Okay. So that's my six players, and I spent 185 You actually spent 183 Right, okay. So we each had our six players, our core team, and... Right around the same dollar amount, and variably almost every draft after this. So this is kind of the strategy that we're going for, and then we're able to fill up the rest of our team... That leaves you roughly fifteen dollars, I guess, after one eighty-five. So you got fifteen dollars left for seven players, and that's an average of two dollars per player. I know that doesn't sound like much. No, but at this point in the draft, your team's already got a very strong core. After you get your six player, you're going to just kick back and wait for a little bit. Let yeah. the rest of the team spend all their money. You can stop and watch like an episode of South Park or check your scores, ESPN, see what's going on, go give your wife a kiss, grab a beer in the fridge, whatever, scratch your ass. You can take a little break at this point, let everybody else kind of spend down their money, you've got your core. And now, now you go to work. Now is when you start getting budget items. There's gonna be a lot of other teams that are literally left with one dollar per player that's when you can bid two dollars that's why you have a few extra that, dollars that two dollars okay it's not that they're going to go for two dollars that two dollars meant you bought the player and nobody else could contest it okay so this two dollar average is about what you want and again players drop off fast so let's just list uh, some of the players that we saw that are being drafted for less than $2. Okay, so just, all right, let's throw one more thing out here. You could afford, if you need one more piece, you could get like a $5 player if you had to. That like Georgie Dang, something like that. Nikolai Moradich. If you gotta spend five bucks, you can still do it. And then still stick with two and $1. You're fine. Let's talk about what's $2, what's $1. I mean, it sounds like, oh, well, these, these are probably like crappy players. No, let's talk about players we've seen going in the $2, $1 bargain bin range. All right. I'll, I'll go for the guys I got in my particular situation several times over. Uh, Roy Hibbert for a dollar. Uh, Jalil Okafor, $2. Bradley Beal, $2. Uh, Jabari Parker, Emmanuel Moutier, Wilson Chandler, all a dollar. And I was, wow, that's, that's cool. Wow, that's a lot of good value for a dollar. What else is out there? There's a lot of exciting things out there for a dollar or two dollars. Ryan, just hit us with the short list, the long list, whatever. This is the highlights. I mean, if you want to take a gamble, you can get a Derrick Rose for that cheap. Uh, a dollar. A dollar. Literally. Great trade value if he looks Pans like he's out. healthy. Uh, Chris Middleton, I like him, especially with uh, my... Paul George, Clay Thompson, one two combo. Okay. I uh, got Jared Jack, John Rondo for your punting strategy team. JJ Redick, Yusuf Nurkic, Kimball Walker, Nikolai Moradic. He's like $3. Again, it varies. It depends. Michael Carter Williams. These are not set in stone. Don't panic and be like, oh, that guy wasn't there for a dollar. These are just names that we've seen, okay? We've done a lot of auction drafts this weekend. These are names we've seen. So it's not a guarantee, but it's to give you an idea that you can still find value for a dollar. You can still find those pieces to round out your team. So in that way, are we advocating having that well-rounded team or getting your top tier players? Like, how does this strategy kind of... It's kind of a little bit of both. That's what I'm saying. I think it's everything. It's all of the above. You're building a well-rounded core. And if you spend a little less, you just got to make that up in the middle of rounds. Get a couple of, you know, $10 players, some Danny Greens. and Right. You can get, again, this is modifiable. This, is, this isn't set in stone. You can, you can change this. You can adjust as you need. We tend to be a bit spendy, but we like our big ticket items. Ten, five dollar players, there's plenty of those out there, but honestly, we just want you to have an idea of you build this core and then you can find value and round out the rest of your lineup. So don't feel bad if you're like, oh, maybe I spent too much. 
You're better off having spent too much than not enough. We cannot emphasize that point enough. No, seriously. Like, you know, don't go overboard. Don't get ridiculous. But even if you do, you can still fill out a team. And the beautiful thing about these auction drafts, after the draft's over, all the player values go back to where they should be, the way they normally are. And if you happen to have three first-round players, and you can do a two-for-one or a three-for-one type of trade and round out your lineup and make up for even though, indiscreet spending. Even yeah. though we do talk about spending your money and making sure, I'm not a fan of that team that gets the KD, Steph Curry, you know, two of the top five players, and then nothing but $1 players or, you know, just not enough well-roundedness or good depth. No, I mean, you... You can do that. We, we actually tried to do that, and we came away with an okay solution to that. But we prefer this, like, treat it like a normal snake draft in a lot of ways. Again, it's not a snake draft, and you can choose the type of team that you're building, but pretend that your first move, okay, where was that in a normal draft? All right, what group of players is next within my reach? If this were so a normal I, draft. So ideally... You know, you get one player per each round, but you get the player that you want. So you get a player ranked 1 through 12, 12 through 24, and so on and so on. And then you should have five players in the top 60, ideally. And then hopefully you can get a bunch of 60 and 70 ranked players to fill out your the rest of your lineup. Don't feel bad if your last few picks don't pan out. That's what the waiver wire is for. I mean, it's auction, so there's going to be stuff that's still sitting there too. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, I mean it, there's still stuff out there that we can go and add after these drops that are out there. Plenty. All right, so I, I hope we answered that part of the question well enough without rambling too much. I mean, again, uh, $180, $185 within your first six picks. Yeah. And you got $15 to spread out over seven people. You can do that pretty much any way you want. Same way you filled out your $180, okay. $185. And so Mike also wants to know, like, what players are we targeting? Well, okay. Uh, again, we're treating this kind of like it's a snake draft. Not entirely, but uh, you pick your favorite guy. Who's your, who's your big ticket guy? Me? It happens to be Boogie Cousins right now, DeMarcus Cousins. So DeMarcus Cousins is a guy I like. I'm going to have to punt turnovers pretty much at that point, so it's okay. I can, I can find some point guards that turn the ball over a little bit, and I can live with that as long as everybody's got good percentages, right? Yeah. Paul George, I think he's a guy we're both targeting. Who else? Who's good value? Georgie Dieng. Who else is really good value? Well, what do you like? See, for me, again, I'm targeting, unless I'm trying to do my punt strategy and getting my DeAndre and uh, Drummond combo, I'm going for that Clay Thompson, Jimmy Butler, Lillard, George, Kawhi, you know, kind of two of those for any given draft. Uh, again, that puts me around the hundred, hundred and five dollars for my two players, and I'm happy with the way they're they're built together. And then it kind of depends on which guys I get them for the middle rounds. I tend to be getting a lot of uh, Oladipo and Brandon Knight and Eric Bledsoe, but for really the players that I have kind of across the board, or again some of those. Two through six dollar players or players I've been able to get at that value. Okay. Uh, I've gotten CJ McCollum. I've been preaching him all preseason, getting him pretty much across the board for a dollar or two. He's probably, yeah, he's probably Miles in that bargain Turner's bin. another bargain bin, one, two, three dollar player. More than happy to get him. Nikolai Miradic. Uh, he's a found his way on a lot of my teams. And then for that kind of $15 player, $10, $15, I've been trying to double down on Wiggins and Giannis. Regardless of the type of team I'm trying to build, they, they fit it. 
right, there's you tend to have a bit of a positional scarcity the way you're going. I mean, front court, you, you don't have a lot of centers in a lot of these teams. So if you've got those swing guys, right, Giannis, Wiggins, they'll pick you up some extra rebounds to make up for not having. Yeah, and some extra rebounds, a block here and there. So, you know, you can still wait and get a Fareed and Chandler and, you know, some not really sexy centers. Effective. Effective. I would say if you're getting Fareed for a couple of bucks and good old Tyson Chandler, you can set your watch to the guy as long as he's healthy. Yeah, but again, this is kind of like different strategies. You know, I'm not necessarily going for rebounds and blocks. All right, so this is now, now for auctions, you're not an auction rebounding team anymore. Is that what you're saying? You're not, a, you're not punting anymore in auction? Um, it just has kind of worked out that way for me. I mean, I did have a team that I did do my punt strategy, and I got my DeAndre and Drummond combo and actually paired, him, paired them with Lillard and George. Okay. So it's kind of a weird punting strategy. I didn't get as many bigs continually down the line that I normally like. But I feel I got a lot more scoring and threes and assists than I normally would have. So it's just kind of that one team still well-rounded with just the punting free throws. Not necessarily going all out for my five to four. Okay. I, I find it's hard to build those teams more so in a auction draft than it is in a snake. It just kind of works that way out for me. I don't know. People have the same ideas and the strategies. Well, and that's again, that's the beauty of auction. It's you can't you can't sit there and say, "Oh, well, I didn't get my guy." The only reason you didn't get your guy is either because you didn't have enough money or you didn't hit the button one more time and say, "One more dollar." One everybody's got a price. Everybody for the million dollar is. man. So, you know, you just hit bid one more time and then you get your guy, right? Yeah. And it happens to me. I get caught in the cookie jar sometimes. Oh, I want that guy. I want that guy. Wait, I don't want that guy. Why am, why am I bidding on this guy? Oh. Oops. Oh, well, all right. Well, okay. All right. I can roll with that. It happens. So let it happen a few times to you. I mean, it's again, $180 in your first six picks. Don't feel bad if that happens. That's good. We recommend it. Just spread it out. Make it go six picks. And so then uh, Mike also wants to know... If, the, if we noticed any significant drop-off at any specific positions. Yeah, I guess I was talking about that sort of briefly in the context of your own team. Mm -hmm. But uh, point guards and centers seem to kind of go on these runs in auction leagues. The price is higher for those players. You like your Lillard, but Lillard, Lillard gets expensive. People save their money like smart guys. The smart guy, oh, he's saving his money. But everybody's a smart guy in these drafts. And when they're saving their money, they're going for Lillard. So it's like three guys all at once going for Lillard because they're the smart guy. No offense, but... It happens. I mean, there's a lot of guys who think they're the smart guy. So it's at that point, it's which smart guy wants them the most. And if, you, if it's coming down to waving dollar bills around... I think for me, just uh, point guards, it's, it's kind of been my one of my weak positions, I guess, unless I've gone with, like... A team of combo point guards that aren't your true point guards. I mean, I know there's one team where I got Oladipo, Bledsoe, Reggie Jackson, and Brandon Knight. So I'm good there, but it just seems like when it's time to take one of the really good point guards, there's another player You're that saving. I want to spend my money on. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, and for me, I... I guess Teague's one of the guys I've had a lot. He's kind of your last-ditch point guard. But if he's your first point guard, you're in trouble. I mean, am I right about that? And it's one of the reasons why I actually like punting assists. Because yeah. not only are you punting assists, but you're winning turnovers by punting assists. It's one of those, like, plus Reverse, and minuses. Yeah. Like, if you get a lot of assists, you're more than likely going to get a lot of turnovers. So by punting a counting stat not necessarily straight punting, but by slow playing a counting stat like assists, you're saving yourself the penalty stat. Yes. That's why I don't like turnovers. It's just, I mean, it's a good, 
It's a good stat, but I just, uh, it's so frustrating. I mean, really, who's paying, like, I mean, efficiency? Come on, we're all about the ESPN highlight reels. We don't care how many shots the guy took. I mean, I don't know. Am I wrong? No, I, build, I play Roto teams. Of course, I'm all about efficiency. I get it. <laughs> I get this. I'm all about efficiency. But really, I mean, we're a sound by culture. We're all about ESPN highlights. It's amazing. We got penalty stats. I don't, I don't know how I feel about penalty stats. How do you feel about penalty stats? Um, usually, penalty stats is when they have too many stats as it is. And I'm not a big fan of leagues that go overboard with stats. Like personal fouls, offensive rebounds. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of like assist to turnover. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's kind of position specific in a lot of ways. Yeah, so I kind of like keeping them pretty standard. Fine, one penalty stat. We can live with turnovers, I guess, in a standard setup. All you right. just don't like turnovers because you <sighs> like Boogie who gets you over four a game and fucks you in the ass when it comes to turnovers. No, it's not that bad. It's real bad. Yeah, that's fine. It's real bad. Yeah, it's fine. I know. I'm just saying. It's fine. I don't play turnovers, and I don't... Actually, you know, honestly, most of my teams are otherwise so efficient, it barely even registers. It is absurd as personal turnover numbers, but most of the rest of my teams are not so much turnover prone. All right, and so the last part of Mike's question is he just wants to know if there's anything else that we think might help. Uh, yeah... Yeah, don't be afraid of the bargain bin. Uh, you're better off having spent than not spent. $185 through six picks. Gives you 15 to play with through another seven more. That's fine. You can, you can, you can sort that money out. You can sort your uh, six players any way you want. Three $30 players and some other guy. However you want. It doesn't matter. Just sort them however you want, right? Yep. And get your Giannis, Wiggins, Parker, McCollum, Turner. Go for go for those guys. Who else did we talk about that we should uh, make sure people get? Anybody else highlight player uh, list? I still like Miradich, um, Georgie Dang, Roy Hibbert. Georgie Dang, I like Georgie Dang. Uh, Okafor Hibbert's on the right cheap. team. Bradley Beal. Um, Miles Turner's always good. Who else? Oh, Reggie. Can we say Reggie still? Yeah, Reggie's Reggie, still a pretty good value. Yeah, I, Reggie Jackson's actually been on damn near all my teams as well. I mean, you might, in a normal draft, somebody might be reaching for him in the third round. We've heard about that. People keep talking about that in the comment sections down below on YouTube. But We've seen people reach for him quite a bit. But in auction, people are like, whoa, I'm not spending third round money. If they did, he'd be going for like $35. But he's still going for around 15 15 and that's a bargain if you truly believe. Um, this is more for the people who are going to be in our own league, who keep telling us that Reggie Jackson's a third-round pick. Well, if you look at You can what, get him for $15. If you look at what he did in Detroit, those are damn good numbers. No, I, I agree. I, I don't disagree, but... I mean, if you're taking them in the third round, you're getting no upside. That you're Spend your for money, it. practice doing mock drafts. So mock auction, do a few mock auctions. Pay attention to your, your stats and your budget and how big the league is. Spend your money. Let's just keep saying it. Spend it like you're Donald Make Trump. Make it rain! You're Donald Trump meets Million Dollar Man, okay? It's like a wrestling event. Is that a fair assessment, too? Sure. Why not? They got money. They're loudmouth blowhards. So be a loudmouth blowhard and spend all your money. Spend your money. Don't leave any money on the table. Save a couple dollars for those one dollar players, but you can get the ones that you want. And if you actually think you've got a better auction draft strategy, we're open to hear it. I don't know if anybody else out there is taking the time to break down dollar amounts per player or whatever. I'm the way sure we have. UFC is MMA. He's got his strategy. I'm curious if uh, if people think we're out of line. I'd be I'd be interested to know. But I I do think we've done a lot of research on this now this weekend. 
And if you think you can bust us in an auction draft, even though we're telling you our strategies, uh, we still got a spot or two open in our Fantasy Sports Addicts Anonymous Fantasy Auction Basketball League. It's a really long title. It's We're going to have to condense that. But yes, it is an auction basketball draft, which we're here talking about today. Woo! Thanks for Ow. listening. All right. Uh, I think that's probably enough coverage. I mean, we got our auction draft coming up in two minutes here, so let's... Let's call. You want to go ahead and uh, close us with the Fantasy Sports Serenity Prayer? Yeah, let's last shout out here. Who is this, Mike? Mike Facolt. Mike Facolt. If that's your last name, hopefully we got it right. Sorry, buddy, if we didn't. But, Mike, thank you for the question. It led us to several videos, an entire weekend of drafting, and a very late night. You, you sent us down the rabbit hole of nothing but auction drafts all weekend. We're now addicted. And we can't thank you enough for it because we love auction drafts, and it was a lot of fun, even though we didn't necessarily get as much work done as we would have liked to have. Well, we did work because it was all auction drafting. Hopefully we can get him into our league. Mike, hopefully you're listening, and hopefully you'll join our uh, FSAA league if you're not already in it. We're going to be auction drafting, as we've said before. Mike, shout out Mike. And that's why you listen to our podcasts and watch our videos, because we'll give you shout outs and do videos specifically for you. Seems like most of our videos we've done lately have been uh, user generated. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, we're going to close with the Fantasy Sports Serenity Prayer. Fantasy gods! Fantasy gods! Please grant me the serenity to set my ideal lineup, the courage to add drop aggressively, the wisdom, as always, to make good trades. Amen. Amen. All right. $180, $185 in the first six picks of your auction draft. Do it. Do it. We recommend it. Try it out. Let us know how it goes. Uh, also, check us out. FantasySportsAddicts.com. That's our website. We're on Twitter at letter F, letter S, the word double, letter A, at FS double A. Hit us up anytime. We're happy to answer your questions or talk about whatever you want to talk about. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. And Stitcher. Stitcher. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Leave a comment. Give rate us a us. thumbs up. Yeah, rate us on iTunes. Rate us on Stitcher. And well, what else are we leaving out? Also, oh, yeah. there's a little uh, tip button on our YouTube channel page. Uh, if you like what you're doing, buy well, me a beer. Yeah, if you like how it's going, let us know. My well, keg has been empty. It's so sad and lonely and dry how dry Ryan is. So dry. So dry. All right. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you next week, and hopefully we have more basketball. All right. Thank you. Woo! Woo! All right, it's awesome.